Hey cuties, I'm Lanikia and you're watching what happened on the soaps. Today is, oh, excuse me, this is the bold and the beautiful edition. Today is Friday, yay! November the 18th, 2022. Let's jump right into this on a scale of one to 10. You know what? I'm going to give it a 7.5. I love the different people that they showed and it was good. Like if y'all show more people, we enjoy it instead of just like the same. Cause the last few days has been the same. It was a lot of people, but they were all in the same. It was two different scenes, if that makes sense. But you had a bunch of different scenes going on today and it was a solid episode. It was a good episode for a Friday for me. So we start start off with Katie and Eric. And first of all, Katie looked gorgeous. I love that dress she had on. It was so pretty and her hair was luscious. She looked really pretty. I was like, girl, are you going to the wedding? And she said, no. Um, so then we see Katie and Eric and she's just telling him, I know that you believe in, in my sister and Ridge. So why are you supporting this wedding? wedding? And he says, yes, I do believe in them. And he believes that Ridge is supposed to be with Brooke and, and he, you know, but he's going to support this wedding. Cause at the end of the day, that's his son. And, but he does said, tell Katie, Eric, tell Katie what you know. He said, so we're going to find out, you know, whatever it was about this annulment that made it come through. So I was like, just tell her, tell her Eric, but he doesn't. And so they're, she, they're just both like, we know Ridge loves her, but we, they don't. Well, Katie doesn't understand why he's going through this and Eric can't say. So that was pretty much it on that. So then we go to little Douglas and he's in his room looking at the voice thing, um, looking at all his recordings. And then Thomas comes in. So he puts, he hides his phone under his pillow. And Thomas says, why are you not dressed? I said, okay, Douglas with the Burberry shirt on. He says, why are you not dressed? And he said, Burberry. He said, because um, does he have to go to this wedding? Because he doesn't want to celebrate this. His dad, like you caused this, Thomas. And, uh, and then I said emotional blackmail much because he says, this will make grandma um, and grandpa happy if you're there. And they'll be sad if you don't, if you're not there. And I said, emotional blackmail, Thomas. That's why you don't need to be with this little boy. And I regret in the beginning when I said that you should be like, they should transition into him to you. Um, you know, maybe one day out the week, then twi two days out the week. I regret even saying that because you have not changed and they can't blame this on anything else except this is your character. This is your personality. These are your morals and you did not change. And some of y'all are all in the comments wanting to go back and forth with me. I'm not going to go back and forth. These are my opinions. <laughs> and if you don't agree with them, you can put what you think and then we'll, we'll just be done with that. So then he finally um, tells Douglas, go ahead and change um, into your into your clothes. And Douglas is like, fine or whatever. So then we see Brooke and she is floating, not Brooke Taylor. And she is floating around the house. She is too happy. It is her wedding day. And she's been wanting this for a long time. And so she is floating around and she's, you know, kicking up her legs. She's just happy that, she, you know, she finally gets to marry the love of her life. Um, so she finally gets to marry him and then she goes into her, you know, room and everything. And Steffi is there and she says, Steffi, um, first of all, Steffi's dress was gorgeous. I, I like the, um, you know, the, the little, um, I don't want to call It's not a, it's not a body like cross body dress but i like the you know how they gathered it on the sides it was really pretty anyways it was a pretty color on steffi as well but she sees uh taylor's dress and she was like oh mom it's so pretty and so they're just excited and happy and so taylor sits down and she says we got to do your hair and makeup i said y'all not gonna have a team come in but okay she said we got to do your hair and makeup so she sits down and they're starting to do hair and makeup and then Taylor gets sad and she's like, mom, what's the matter? And she was like, I was just thinking about how your dad came to Aspen because of Brooke and not really, not really because of her. He came because of Brooke and what she had done and calling CPS. And Stephanie's just like, but at the end he said, you know, it's you. He, he realized, um, don't get sad. He realized, you know, the type of woman Brooke was, and he doesn't want that in his life. He wants you. But I, you know, Taylor is my girl and I like Taylor. So I don't want her with Rich <laughs> because he's using her to get over Brooke. Um, I want her with someone who makes her the first choice, not the second. And uh, that's just my opinion on it. I, I don't want her with him. Um, and 
the fact that she was that sad, uh, you know, the sadness on her face when she realized, because you can word it, you can put it nicely, you can say however you want to say it, but you're his second choice. He would not have come to Aspen had he not been upset with Brooke, but it, it is what it is. They just uh, um, are just excited about the wedding and they continue to get dressed. And they just um, continue to say that they can't believe what Brooke did. They can't believe she would betray um, Thomas that way. Like, they know she doesn't like him, but God, that's that's horrible calling CPS. But they're going to focus on the wedding day, and that's it with them, y'all. Then we move on to this buster, <laughs> Rich. Um, and he's trying to put on his um, suit, and he's at Forrester Creations. I, I mean, I don't – okay. Um, so he's trying to put on his suit and everything, and Carter comes in, and he says, you need some help. And he says, yeah, I can't find my cufflinks. Um, and you know, he was like, but Rich was like, but it's not about me anyways. It's about the bride <laughs> as it should be. And Carter said, yeah. But then Carter also tells him, are you sure about this? And Ridge doesn't want to hear this, but you did the same thing when Carter was trying to marry Paris over Quinn. So let this man ask you, are you sure about this? But he tells him yes. And he says, I need my cufflinks that Taylor gave me. And he was like, okay, why don't you put them on? And he says, they're at Brooks. I said, oh. I kid you not, this bum, <laughs> I kid you not, this, this man, and Carter, he says, <sighs> Carter says, don't even worry about it, I'll go get him, and he says, no, I can't, and he said, no, I'll go to the back, nobody will even know, um, that's Brooks' place, sir, <laughs> you got, okay, I, I'm over it, I'm over it, like, wear a different pair of cufflinks, Wear a different pair of cufflinks that you can't have that pair. It's at Brooke's place on her on your wedding day, and you're gonna have your best friend sneak over into her place to get some cuff. You should have got your stuff out. Your bum. Let's move on. So then we see um Brooke is Brooke is at her place and she's sad. She's thinking about um uh Ridge and then Bill shows up. I said, Bill, what do you want? Now, what do you want, Dollar Bill? And he says, I'm about to declare my love for this woman for the third time. I said, okay. So he tells Brooke that he's still in love with her. He still wants to be with her. He still needs her. And he he knows about Ridge getting married. And he knows how that hurts her. But let it go, girl. And come on over here and be with me. Because that man ain't no good for you. He doesn't mean you no good. And I love you. And I would never treat you the way that man has treated you. And she says... I love him. <laughs> she was, she really didn't say anything, but she was, she was just like, Bill, you know, she still wants her marriage to work. And well, her annulment, annulment marriage. I mean, at this point it's over Brooke, <laughs> you know, Brooke, it's not that I hate Brooke. Cause some of y'all think that, Oh, if you like Taylor, then you hate Brooke. No, I, I'm indifferent to Brooke, but I still don't like the way she's been treated especially by Psycho Thomas, because he was the one who did it. So I'm just like, move on from Ridge. Like, it's over. Move on. And Bill is so, like, y'all, everyone's moving on so fast. Y'all don't give each other, yourselves a moment to breathe. And so Bill is like, he'll move on, so come on over here. And so then he's talking all this talk, and Carter pulls up, because he was about to go through the back door, but he hears Bill, so he he's really listening. And I said, well, Carter, what? Because he's looking a little bit distraught, and I said, why are you looking upset about this? Because he hears Bill telling um, Brooke, I don't love Katie. I want you. And I said, well, you was just in Katie's face last month telling her you wanted her. So what is this? You were just in that woman's face telling her that you didn't want Brooke. You wanted her. Bill, go on. You don't know what you want either. You're no better than Ridge. You're no better than Ridge. Bring Brooke somebody else on completely new and do the same for my girl Taylor too, please. So then we see Thomas and Ridge. So Thomas has, is downstairs and he's like, ah, my best man duties right on time. And so he and Ridge are talking and everything. And, and he's, well, I was going to tell Ridge, I really wish you hadn't told everybody about what happened with um, CPS. He was like, oh, it's out there now. And he said, but we can't tell Brooke. She can never know. And Ridge is looking at Thomas like, what? And Thomas is, he tilted his head down and looked at Ridge like, now you heard what I said. <laughs> I said, Thomas said, you're not going to expose his secret. So then little Douglas come down in his suit. He looks cute. And um, Ridge said, ah, you can't be like that. And he said, what? He was like, you can't look better than the groom. You look nice. 
But little Douglas, he was just like, mm-hmm. And Rich said, what's the matter? What's going on? And Thomas, he, he's all right. He's just excited for you guys, but he's all right. And Rich said, yeah, I know weddings are boring, but, you know, we're happy. And Thomas, it's the best thing for every, the family is whole and happy again, trying to talk to Douglas with his emotional blackmail and stuff that he's doing to this little boy um, to keep his secret. Um, to filling him up with guilt so he won't talk. But and look, Douglas said, "Can I go to my room?" And Thomas was all too happy for him to go. Um, so then Thomas and Ridge talk, and he tells him, "You know, I've done some things. You've done some things, Dad, that we're not proud of. That not proud of. But you stuck by my side, and I appreciate that." And and Ridge tells D Thomas, "You're a changed man, and I'm so proud of you. You you know you've really changed, and all of this is because of you. Um, you got." You know, you and Steffi never gave up on us and you got us together. Um, you set this in motion. I said, child, you don't know. He said, you. Uh, so, you know, you were concerned and you cared about us and wanted your family and wanted us to be a family. So now we're, we, you know, we're about to do that. And you're such a good father to Douglas. And I said, baby, get off the screen <laughs> with this. I'm just ready for next week to see how this all goes down. But y'all, that was the bold and the beautiful today don't forget to like comment and subscribe it is the weekend y'all know if you go out be safe um be blessed and thank you so much for watching i will see you next monday for all new episodes of what happened on the soaps the bold and the beautiful edition thank you so much for watching goodbye